We were the chickens on the fresh ground yesterday, so I thought it was as good a time as any to show you what we're doing with them. This is where they were. You can see it's pretty thick straw mulch. So look, you can see that's what, about six inches. And there's nothing left, that's down to soil. Um, so they're taking out all the insects, all the grass, all the buttercup. Uh, they've left this behind, it's good for planting into you now. We're gonna put potatoes in here in rows. That's gonna to happen today or tomorrow. They're doing the next plot now, again, um, with the mulch down. And we've got enough mulch to do another two, which will take them you know, the next one there and then the next one over. Uh, and there'll be six of them eventually. They'll go around in a rotation, preparing uh, veg beds for us to come behind and plant. But in the longer term, behind that, now, right, orientation. So that way's north. The croft is basically a diamond pointed south, and that's directly behind me. We see that gate, that's the corner of our field. The gate is just the other side of our boundary, and it comes up this side and then goes across the bottom. And that's a 90 degree corner in the bottom of that field. There's a really quite wide belt of shelter trees all the way around. It's already pretty diverse, but inside that we're going to put, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a different video on the shelter belt. Uh, but inside that, we're going to put uh, a food forest system in that's uh, mostly for the chickens, but we'll get a bit of food out of that as well. So, yeah, let's have a look at that. So I'm just a little bit down below where the chickens are. So they got one more plot to come down here before they start going around in the rotation. So I'm just a little bit down below that, that way south. Um, so on the ground down here, I've put in a load of this. I mean, there's hundreds of these gone in. This is a really aggressive, uh, aggressive spreading form of comfrey. Uh, that this, by the yeah, by the end of this year, you can see there's quite a few of them. It, yeah, it's quite a big area covered. Um, they're about they're taking out about 50% of the grass here by the end of the year. Um, we've also got uh, various cuttings. This is um, elder. Takes really quite easily from uh, cuttings shoved in in winter. And even these that look pretty dead, they'll just come regenerate from the bottom. It does take under the ground and then comes up. Uh, and that's coming in just as a nurse crop. And these are cuttings of apple, which we just shove in, um, just to try and keep, you know, in winter, these, uh, someone was pruning, so we just shoved them in so that uh, the voles will have something to chew on besides trying to get through our guards to the trees that we've planted. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and some of them seem to have taken um, I mean, just because they put leaves on, you can't, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean they're taken. But we've done this before with apple, and uh, some of them do take. So we leave a few of them to come up into full height trees. Um, they need to be pruned because they're quite a bit south of the northern edge, and we don't shade out too much of the stuff behind. Um, one thing that's done really well, we put in some fruit trees. And uh, this is a morello on a dwarfing rootstock here you go you can see there's the fence line so we're down reasonably close to that now uh so even though these are currently the biggest trees that we've got virtually i mean there's you know the odd pine that's bigger but uh yeah these are the biggest things and they're doing really well but these are a dwarf rootstock so they'll only come up to a couple of meters and then they'll stop and these will eventually become an understory as everything else around it comes up bigger because obviously these are the northern edges so it's where the biggest trees go so we're going to have um, chestnut, uh, there's a couple of oak down here, um, what else have we got? Uh, monkey puzzle trees, a um, few things like that, you know, big um, climax canopy trees. Then there'll be an understory below that, and then below and in front of that, we'll have things like this. And then in front of that, so where the comfrey was, where the comfrey is, um, there's going to be Siberian pea shrub and mulberry at reasonable spacing. We'll just have a quick look at them now. So this is Siberian pea shrub. This is one year old. You see, it's a it's a good height. You know, it grows pretty quick. You can't really um, find this easily as a plant, but it's really easy to grow from seed. Uh, I just bought them online. Uh, as I say, this is one year old and it's growing really quick. Part of the reason it grows fast is it's, um, uh, it's a legume, so it fixes nitrogen. Um, but, you know, it does the whole nodule on the root trick. 
but uh, and opinions vary as to how much of that it makes available to other plants. It doesn't really matter. The leaves are loaded with nitrogen, and they drop at the end of the year. It feeds the system anyway. It doesn't matter. It grows to about six meter, so it's a, a good height. Um, it's a, a really useful tree. Oh, and the beans it produces, uh, which are like tiny little uh, what's the size of lentils, and that's exactly what they are. They're a lentil substitute for us. We can use it, but also it's one of the very best poultry fodder because uh, it's a bulk high protein feed uh, that should be pretty straightforward to harvest in quantity. This is a mulberry. This is one of the smallest ones we got. This is um, seed I imported from Pakistan. This is a giant mulberry that should apparently do well here. We'll see. Uh, we've got a lot of types of them. Uh, one of the, but the one we've mostly got isn't this. Uh, this is the prettiest one, which is why I fetched it up. But um, most of them are white mulberry. They're not all white fruit. It's just the name. Um, but that is a much bigger tree, and if it, we let it, it'd grow up too high, and it'd shade out the Siberian pea shrub. But we're not going to let it do that. Um, the leaves are very good. This somewhere between like you know five and ten percent protein, kind of. Uh, you know, it's somewhere in that region. It's a very high protein feed, so you can feed the leaves to your livestock. But you can also, um, when they get too big, they respond really well to coppicing and pollarding. So we can just come through, take off whole branches, and prune them down. Then it gives us another feed stock that we can feed to the chickens and well, the other poultry. Um, between the two, uh, they're going to form the main backbone of uh, the feed stock for the poultry in this system, in combination with the comfrey down below. So yeah, so that's our poultry system, both the uh, initial veg system that integrates with them and the uh, longer term food forest for them, but also we'll be able to pulse the ducks through as well and of course they'll be able to go through the uh, the main crop veg production as well like the potatoes and so on just keep on top of slugs um, so all these elements elements will integrate quite nicely together along with the uh, the soft fruit on the berm and of course all the uh, <laughs> all the water collection systems ducks do love the paddy um, so in terms of context this isn't something that you do if you're doing like a large batch of commercial broilers or something um, but that's not really our context. Um, I'd need to put, this is the, the north edge, the north winds are quite cold in winter of course, so I'd need to put shelter belt in here anyway. So with just a little bit of design, um, we're able to integrate chickens into it. Um, and once it's mature and we're getting you know, the fruit, the nuts, uh, the legumes from the Siberian pea shrub and so on, uh, it'll be interesting to see just how much feed we can keep on minimal labor um, so that on, say, half a day's work, we could uh, keep them through the winter. Um, and on that basis, you know, how many chickens could we keep effectively for free? Um, that would be interesting. So it's completely input free. That's the ultimate intention, I think, um, for here is to see, right, you know, how much can we extract from the land, skim off the top um, while improving it letting it mature, let it go through succession into something that's a lot more stable um, while simultaneously uh, getting really good eggs and the odd bit of meat as well as things like, well, a veg garden. So yeah, that's our chicken system.